Good afternoon. Oops. Uh, welcome to join our Sunday service. Okay, so now yes, uh, first thing first. Okay, let's welcome uh, the newcomers. Okay, yes, uh, for my left hand side. Okay, uh, this gentleman, I, I remember you came to our English congregation before, right? Would you mind that the guy sit beside a Colin? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, how many times you come here? Several times. Okay, thank you. Huh? Would you a second time? Would you mind introducing yourself again? Uh, what's your name? Okay. Le oh, Leon. Okay, okay. Give a big hand to Leon. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Oh, and the the guy sat sit beside the Leon. Okay. Yes. Would you mind? Yeah, you can. You may sit either. You will stand up or sit. Okay, that's not. That's a matter. What what's your name? What? Dylan. Okay. Okay. Give a, a big hand to Dylan. All right. Okay. All right. My right hand side. Okay. Yeah. This lady. It seems that okay. You came to, to my congregation. Yeah. The one. The this lady sit in front of Thomas. Yes. 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 Would you mind introducing yourself? Hmm? Oh, you just one moment. Okay, welcome to Barbara. Okay. Oh, yeah, he's one of our old friends too. Oh, I remember your name, but I still invite you to stand up and introduce yourself. The guy sit beside Tinyan, okay? Yes. <laughs> I remember your name. <laughs> oh, okay, Sam, okay. Welcome, welcome, Sam. Okay, that's all. Okay, anyone I miss? Okay, again, okay, uh, according to our good tradition, okay, we welcome three times, okay? So, the Sunday school, um, little brothers and sisters, would you mind stand up so that we can welcome you again? Okay, this is the second time, okay? Stand up, stand up. Okay, give them a big hand, okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, yes, okay. <clears throat> So now we are going to read God's word. It is a monthly scripture. Okay, so we are going to read three times. The first and second times we are going to read in English, but the third time we are going to read in Pinyin. Okay, okay, let's go. Okay, we'll read all together. No one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, he has much known. Book of John chapter 1, 18. No one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. Book of John, chapter 1, 18. Now we are going to read in Pinyin. Okay. 从来没有人看见神,只有在父怀里的独生子,将他表明出来,约翰福音一章十八节. Okay, now I'm going to invite JJ to make some announcement. Okay. Hello everyone, here are your announcements for the 14th of July. Our first item, our church will be holding a graduation supper for our high school and university graduates on July 24th, which is a Wednesday at 5.30 in the lower auditorium. So may our Lord lead and guide these graduates' future to glorify his name. Baptism class will be held today in room 3K at 4.15. So if you want to be baptized on Thanksgiving in October, please contact Mr. Pong. Frank will be leading a spiritual growth workshop uh, at the Gabriel Fellowship on July 27th. So please invite your friends and set aside, uh, set aside this time to attend. For our stewards, the stewards meeting will be held next Sunday um, at, on the third floor at 5 p.m. after our Sunday school. Finally, the church has subsidized about $11,000 for the co worker camp with an average allowance of $75 per person. So we encourage uh, the congregation to make a special offering for this purpose. So please mark co-worker camp on the church offering envelope. Um, and may the Lord, uh, may the offering and effort given be pleasing to the Lord. Now's the time for a Bible verse memorization. Uh, last week's challenge is from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, 
and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his, and his name shall be called uh, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, as well as the New City Catechism number 21, what sort of Redeemer is needed to bring us, uh, bring us back to God? Uh, one who is truly human and also truly God. Are there any takers? Mr. Pong? Mrs. Pong? Is there anyone else? Last week's challenge? If not, let's read next week's challenge together. Next week's challenge comes from Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. And New, New City Catechism, question 22, why must the Redeemer be truly human? That in human nature, he might, on our behalf, perfectly obey the whole law and suffer the punishment for human sin, and also that he might sympathize with our weaknesses. All right, thank you, everyone. Now is the time for worship. Please stand for the reading of the Word of God. Today's call to worship comes from Psalm chapter 90, verse 1 to 17, and I invite everyone to read together. Psalm chapter 90, verse 1 to 17. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting you are God. You return man to dust and say, Return, O children of man, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with the flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger, by your wrath, we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord. How long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. The favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Let us pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in reverence and worship. We thank you for this opportunity and for this place that we can worship you. We know that you have seen all of our hidden sins and you know our hearts. So we just pray that you may forgive our sins and our worship may be acceptable in your sight. I just pray that our worship today may be grounded in truth and in spirit, uh, that we base our, our worship on uh, what you've done for us in the past and your promises for the future. So I just pray that you prepare our hearts for worship today. And I just pray for the upcoming worship service that we may all be focused and solely, solely be focused on worshiping you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Let, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Please remain standing for our first song, Come and See. Come and see, come and see, come and see the King of Love. See the purple robe and crown of thorns he wears. Soldiers mock, rulers sneer, as he lifts the cruel cross. Low and friendless, now he climbs towards the hill. We worship at your feet, where wrath and mercy meet, and a guilty world is washed by love's pure stream. For us he was made sin, Oh, help me take it in. Deep wounds of love cry out, Father, forgive. I worship, I worship the Lamb who was slain. Come and weep, come and mourn For your sin that pierced him there So much deeper than the wounds of thorn and nail All our pride, all our greed All our fallenness and shame and the Lord has laid the punishment on him. We worship at your feet, where wrath and mercy meet, and a guilty world is washed by love's pure stream. For us he was made sin, oh help me take it in. Deep wounds of love cry out, Father forgive. I worship, I worship the Lamb who was slain. Man of heaven, born to earth, to restore us to your hand. Here we bow in on beneath your searching eyes. 
From your tears comes our joy, from your death our life shall bring. By your resurrection power we shall rise. We worship at your feet, where wrath and mercy meet. And a guilty world is washed by love's pure stream. For us he was made sin, oh help me take it in. Deep wounds of love cry out, Father forgive. I worship. I worship the Lamb who was slain. Let us sing our second second song, His Mercy is More. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. What love could remember, no wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all-knowing, he counts not their sum. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord. His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. What patience will wait as we constantly roam? What Father so tender is calling us home. He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. What riches of kindness He lavished on us. His blood was the payment, His life was the cost. We stood neath the death we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. You may be seated. Now is the time for the prayer of confession. Whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Let us take this time to confess our sins and ask for God for forgiveness and also to repent of our sins.
Lord, Heavenly Father, we come before you with a broken and a contrite heart. We know that we have fallen short of your glory this week. Uh, we have sinned against you in word, in thought, and in deed, and also in our hearts. We ask for forgiveness for the sins that we've committed or our responsibilities that we have not done. Again, we just ask that you may forgive our sins and uh, our worship may be acceptable to you. We know that you will remove our sins as far as uh, the East is from the West. So Lord, we just pray that you renew our hearts this week, renew our minds, so that we can walk according to your ways and according to your law. In Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Amen. Uh, Please stand. Christians, what is it that you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today's sermon comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Our speaker is Pastor Lamb. The title is Chosen by God, Proclaim Boldly. I ask that you please remain standing for the reading of the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the perfect purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us, in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth, In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. These are the words of the Lord. Receive it as such, and peace be seated. invite Pastor Lamb to the pulpit. Let's pray. Lord, my God and my Redeemer, may the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hey, folks. <laughs> God has chosen you. Say. God has chosen you. Speak boldly. Speak boldly. You say. Peace to you. Uh, I think you all heard about um, the theological term called predestination. Raise up your hand. Okay, uh, theologian. Huh? And ordinary uh, people may be called um, election or uh, uh, chosen by God, something like that. Huh? Uh, predestination is a significant topic in Reformed theology. Huh? Often uh, referred to predestination holds a central place in the Reformed thought. Huh? Chosen by God symbolizes God's sovereignty. 
He chose those who will be saved before foundation of the world, highlighting his supreme authority uh, over all things. Chosen by God represent the manifestation of God's grace. It is unconditional. Not based on your human actions, merits, or faith. Chosen by God ensures the certainty of salvation, reduction, reducing believers' doubts about their own salvation. While some people may agree, argue that uh, the doctrine of the predestination might lead believers uh, to be lazy uh, in evangelism. Why? Because uh, God has chosen you, chosen me. Uh, you don't have to preach, to share gospel with others. Already chosen by God. Huh? And the fact, the opposite is true. Reformed theology holds the spreading of gospel is a means of fulfilling God's electing purpose. Those whom God has chosen will be saved through hearing the gospel. Thus motivating believers to actively engage in evangelistic, evangelistic work. So, as predestination implies that believers should not be proud. Instead, they should remain humble, recognizing that their salvation is not due to their abilities, but entirely due to God's deliverance. Okay, uh, I share a story in the Old Testament. Uh, in the second chapter of Samuel, uh, second book of Samuel, uh, chapter six, uh, there are one event, they have to move the Ark of uh, Covenant. Uh, how many of you know the Ark of Covenant? Raise up your hand. Ark. There's a two Ark. <laughs> Uh, one ark is the ark, uh, it's the big ship, and the second is the small ark, ark of covenant. Uh, second Samuel chapter six verse one, David again brought together all the young, all the able young men of, of Israel. Uh, how many of them? It's thirty thousand of them. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 6 describes how David led the Israel people to bring the Ark of Covenant from the house of the Abinado to Jerusalem, uh, selecting 30,000 men for this task. Maybe you you will ask, what, what is the, the Ark of the Covenant? How big is that? Uh, I tell you, the Ark of Covenant, about three feet, nine inches long, uh, may, maybe this size, huh? and two feet, three inches wide. Uh, that's maybe it's smaller than this table. Uh, And two feet, three inches again high. high. Uh, usually, uh, four people is enough to move this Ark of Covenant. To carry it, two on each side. So you will think, why? They will have to choose 30,000 men needed. Because this Ark of the Covenant symbolizes God's presence and divine authority. It demands great respect and reverence. This was a sacred task 
requiring meticulous planning and preparation, demonstrating seriously well-organized approach to handling it properly. According to the Mosaic Law, uh, transport, transporting the Ark of Covenant involved strict rules. Assigned to the cohet, cohetries of the East Levitus, Levitus, carrying it using, P, using poles inserted through the rings on the Ark of the Covenant. This was to inspire a sense of blessing and grace from God's presence. Brothers and sisters, what's the meaning of the church? Uh, maybe you have heard about uh, the meaning of the church is the chosen one, the called out one. Church is the called out assembly. Uh, so, uh, every one of you sitting here is called out by God and chosen by God. Huh? Today, we worship here. We are chosen by God, blessed with this opportunity. How should we approach this? Uh, so we are the special one. Uh, we have to handle the Ark of Covenant uh, carefully. And then the, this Ark of Covenant uh, represents the presence of, of God. In the Psalm 24, uh, they mention, uh, verse 3, uh, they have to, before they go into the temple to worship, uh, maybe the leader may ask the people one question. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place. Uh, who is that? Uh, it's you. Huh? And the people uh, may answer. Uh, they will hear, point out attitude required of worship. Uh, who? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. Uh, verse 4 of the Psalm 24. And then the second half of the Psalm 24, verse 7 to 8 and verse 9 to 10, uh, basically they repeated the word. Uh, verse 7 to 8, uh, he said, Lift up your head, you gate, be lifted, you ancient doors, that the king of the glory may come in. Who is the king of the glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Okay. And David repeated in verse 9 to 10. Again, uh, you can read, follow me. Lift up your heads. You gate. Lift them up. You ancient doors. That the king of glory may come in. I will sit properly. <laughs> Okay, lift up your head. Uh, okay, that God will come. And that's one small question here. Who is he? Who is he, the king of glory? Uh, will you ask that? Who? Why we should have to sit properly? Why we should lift up our heads? And then the answer is, the Lord Almighty, He is the King of Glory. Ah. That's why we have to handle everything in the worship ah, decently and carefully. Ah. And the priest will reply ah, for this question. Ah. Two months ago, I... Uh, I conducted uh, the choir in uh, Surrey. Uh, they, sing, they sing a song, uh, the first song I conduct them, called The King of Glory, The King of Glory Comes. Uh, 中文, uh, 
，王要进来啊，王要进来啊 ，You understand 啊？<笑>王要进来。The first word is 啊，王要进来啊，很呃 ，very powerful song they sing 啊。Oh, I think this this song is、uh, from Psalm twenty four. There are two sentences. Who is this King of Glory? Who is this King of Glory? I specially arrange for two children in the choir. They are brothers and sister. A very good guitarist. They can play classical guitar duet. Um, they follow the parents to join the choir, and when we have the last rehearsal on stage, these two little children sit sit on their seat. Suddenly, I think, oh, they have practice, and actually, they are real musician and playing classical guitar for years. So I ask them, "Hey, come, brothers and sister, come and sing these two questions for us. Ah, who is the King of Glory? Ah, just like a child to ask, who is the King? Why we have to so serious?" It make the whole hymn bright because that two children ask, "Who is the king?" And then the choir answer, "Ah, it serves as a significant reminder of us today. Do we know what we believe in? Do we truly know who this King of Glory is? Ah, if we know, ah, we will." Behave better, and the scripture we read just now, the Ephesians chapter one, three to fourteen. Paul states clearly what predestination it is. God chose us before the foundation of the world. I make it three part of this、uh, scriptures, from verse three to six.、Uh, Paul states, "It's the God's blessing and plan. It's the God's blessing and plans."、Uh, verse three, He has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. He chose us in Him before the creation of the world. To be holy and blameless in His sight, and verse five to six. In love, He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with His pleasure and will. Secondly, verse seven to ten, Paul states that Christ's redemption and grace. Verse seven, in Him. We have, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Verse eight, with all wisdom and understanding, He made known to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure. Verse eleven to fourteen, the third part of this scripture, Paul states clearly that. Hold the Holy Spirit's seal and inheritance. Verse eleven: In Him we were also chosen, have been predestined according to the plan of Him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of His will. Verse thirteen: When you believe, you were marked in Him with a seal, the promise. Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance, until the redemptions of those of those who are God's possession to the praise of His glory. In summary, the importance of this、uh, 
predestination, the divine election lies in soul casing God's sovereignty and grace. God planned and chose us before the creation of the world to become his children, which is in immense grace. Through this election, we received spiritual blessings in Christ and became holy and blameless children, affirming the identity of believers. Our election and redemption ultimately aim to praise God's glory. Why God chose us? Uh, Lord just said here, uh, because he has the eternal plan. Election assures us of the hope of salvation in Christ with the Holy Spirit as a sealed, guaranteeing our future inheritance. So God chooses it with the aim, not just sitting here, but have to go out and share your faith with your friends and neighbors. Finally, in the Gospel of Mark chapter 6, 14 to 7, uh, 29, uh, the main message for us is to boldly Preaching God's word. Uh, boldly preaching God's word. Uh, since we are chosen by God to become his children, this is the immense grace and blessing. After being chosen and redeemed, uh, should we just sit back and enjoy uh, our years? Anybody answer me? <laughs> yes or no? No, okay, this side. Yes or no? <laughs> no. Uh, not just sit here. God wants us to go out and boldly preach his word. Uh, I came to this church uh, already four months. Uh, I heard Pastor Hong uh, preach many times. Uh, every sermon, uh, Pastor Hong must preach uh, this boldly preaching God's word with after me. Sit properly and <laughs> boldly preaching God's word. <laughs> uh, okay, it's very serious. Uh, and you will know that why Pastor uh, say it every time. Verse 14, Mark of Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. Jesus' fame has spread, and King Hero heard about it, saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the death, and that's why miraculous power are at work in him. This King of Hero think that Jesus is the John the Baptist uh, resurrection. Why? Because Jesus acts boldly, just like John the Baptist. How John the Baptist bold? John boldly preached God's word, pointed out hero sin. It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Do you dare to say that to your friend? It is not novel uh, for da, 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 da. You know, there's a result after you say this. Uh, as a result, John the Baptist was beheaded. Then how about of Jesus? Jesus boldly preached God's word everywhere. When the religious leaders that time questioned him about whether he was the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, Jesus straightforwardly affirmed, yes, you have said so. But I tell you, from now on, 
you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Matthew 26. And you will rem remember, Jesus cleansed the temple. Now, and dare to accuse the religious leader of turning God's house into dens of thieves. And then after this act and saying, Jesus, where to go? <laughs> the cross, where then? <laughs> Which led to his crucifixion. And one pastor you mentioned uh, many times here, Pastor Wang Yi. You know that? Raise up your hand. Uh, it's Pastor Wang Yi. Boldly preaching God's word. How bold he is. He proclaimed. We believe it's our duty to tell Xi Jinping that he is a sinner. <laughs> I repeat. We believe it's our duty to tell Xi Jinping that he is a sinner. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody will go to China in the future <laughs> and go to Beijing, Guangdong, and then it's our responsibility <laughs> to tell Xi Jinping that he is a sinner. What's the result? As a result, he was sentenced to nine years in prison for inciting the subword six powers and illegal business operations. Okay, just three weeks, three weeks ago, on June 24th, around 4 p.m., a Japanese mother and her child were attacked by a knife wielding a silent while waiting for a school bus in Suzhou, China. Anybody heard of this news? Raise up your hand. Just two. <laughs> bus attending, bus attendant, there's a lady who worked uh, in this bus station called Wu Youping. Wu Youping. Uh, you have to remember this name, Wu Youping, a young lady. At that moment, uh, there's people holding the knife and attack uh, a Japanese mother and child. And this Chinese lady come out, courageously lift out God's word by protecting the other Japanese children. Uh, transcending ethnic enmity. You think that uh, Chinese attack the Japanese and then the Chinese to protecting the Japanese. Uh, he was stable multiple times and sadly uh, succumbed in his jurist. Two days later, what? She passed away. Brothers and sisters, we are the core ones chosen by God let us, by God's grace, be the salt and light in, his corrupt, in this corrupt age, illuminating this dark world. May we have the courage and boldness to expose sin, protect the weak, lift out the light of Christ, and glorify his holy name. God has chosen you, I say to the one next to you. God has chosen you. Boldly preach. 
Boldly preach, preach. Okay, remember Pastor Hong, huh? Boldly preach. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your election, chosen us, allowing us to be redeemed and enjoy your abundant love and grace. Grant us courage and strength to be children of light in this corrupt and dark age, influencing the world in the holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We pray. Amen. And uh, I prepare a song. Um, I don't sing today. Uh, we have uh, English uh, titles. Uh, and, and this song to remember the lady I just mentioned, Wu Youping. Uh, she sacrificed herself and to save those Japanese children. Okay. Uh, you can listen or follow. Uh, there are some Mandarin pinyin. Uh, you can sing, sing with them.
Please stand and in response let us sing Amazing Grace. Offering and the verse for the offering comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Offering is the right and the responsibility for all Christians, so if you have not yet believed or you do not understand the meaning of offering, we ask you to just help us by passing the offering bag along. As the ushers pass the bag along, let us sing, This is My Father's World. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ear, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres this is my father's world i rest me in the thought of rocks and trees of skies and seas his hand the wonders brought. This is my Father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world. Why should my heart be sad? The Lord is King, let the heavens ring. God reigns, let the earth be glad. 
This is my Father's world, though soiled by our sin. Creation groans for God alone can liberate us from within. Please stand. This is my Father's world, and so He sent His Son. By grace through faith our lives to save and sanctify till He's done. This is my Father's world, and all will be made new. Our darkest days will pass away, and He will make His dwelling place. Our darkest days will pass away, and he will make his dwelling place. Please join me in prayer for the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for what you've provided for us this week. Thank you for the food that you've given our families. Thank you for the wisdom that you've given us through your word. Thank you for uh, any monetary monetary gifts that you've given us. We just thank you for this time for us to offer up something a part of what you've given us this week. And we just pray for the upcoming week, for your provision, for your providence, um, so that uh, you may give us what is enough every day so, so that we can glorify you to the best of our abilities. And I just pray for today's offering that it may be used for, for your kingdom's sake, for the furthering of your ministry, and for the, uh, the, for the building of your church. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Let us sing doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I invite Pastor Nam to give us the benediction. Let's pray. May the loving kindness of God the Father, may the grace of Jesus Christ, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us from now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and have a moment of silent prayer. Whoa, yeah. Okay, folks, welcome to join our Sunday service. May our Lord lead us and guide us in this coming week to share the gospel to your friends, relatives, classmates, okay, yeah, and glorify his name.